Hello everybody and welcome to a short video which is a diversion from my normal 737 videos to uh, a new simulator we've we've got it's from an old um, disused if you like aeroplane Cessna 150 Aerobat which has been converted into a simulator and this video will show you how we've uh, we've moved it from my home drive as you see there via a van to a new location and we've uh, we've done a lot to it it was originally um, built and made into a simulator by somebody else but uh, we've now rejuvenated, re-energized and I hope to give you a short tour of this uh, Cessna 150 area back. There it is, Golf, Sierra India Mike or GSIM. At the back there we've got a instructor station. Um, we're running Prepare 3D version 4. Uh, this is the back of the aircraft. Down there you can hopefully see the rudder pedals um, from the front. They run on springs at the back there. When you move them forward, the springs uh, go either way and the rudders move, secured there at the back. If we walk around the aeroplane, you see the wings have been removed. And you can see uh, the doors are original, all the windows are original. Uh, the labelling and the painting has been done. If you look at the original picture, it's a blue aircraft, it's now white, labelled with uh, its simulator logos. The nose chopped off, and you can see in there a couple of seats. Yoke, we'll look at those in a moment. Uh, that's it, the starboard wing also chopped off and the interior is just as it was to most effect, apart from the seats have changed. Um, they're now uh, ex Land Rover seats, but uh, they fit quite nicely. In there we've got, um, if I move that forward, you'll see we've got a, uh, that's the computer. We only use one very, very high spec computer to drive the simulator. A couple of speakers hanging up there. Um, to give the uh, audio effect when you're flying and uh, if we move this seat back we'll show you generally the cockpit excuse the map we've just been flying uh, which is what you'd expect to do with a simulator I suppose so if you look at the gauges they're all pretty much original so there's the RPM gates, fuel gauges, the battery uh, power is on at the moment the engine's not running up there we've got a wet compass um, we've got uh, uh, comms panel, we've got an ADF, we've got a, uh, a nav function, a uh, transponder there is the original transponder. Um, we'll come on to those uh, in, a, in a little while and you'll see them up and running. Uh, yeah. Original rudder pedals uh, on both sides, they are linked, and you'll see that shortly. The original trim wheel, and that's uh, operated with a couple of uh, encoders, rotary encoders. Uh, onto an Arduino uh, control board and the software we use to drive these is uh, is MobiFlight. If you're not familiar I'll probably do another video telling you how to use MobiFlight. Um, the fuel uh, crossover and, and switch over from left to right I've secured it at the moment but that's all in and these are all as much original bits as, uh, as we could possibly use. The controls are fully linked uh, the original yokes um, and you can probably see up in the roof there we've got the original map holder panel there's a poolies guide uh, the original light and uh, uh, everything is pretty much as, as a Cessna 150 when it was up and flying for real door uh, hatches are exactly the same and if we look on the other side you can see again uh, the engines aren't running so all the uh, air instruments um, are not going to be working at the moment until, this, uh, until they're energised. Um, Avionics Master is on. There you can see the, uh, the main instruments. As I said, they're all pretty much original instruments. Um, and we've got the standard uh, instrument uh, layout there. So as I said, COM panel, NAV panel, 11745 on the NAV. Uh, two fuel gauges, an oil temperature gauge and an oil pressure gauge beneath that. Flap controls, mixture um, lever is uh, fully original as is the throttle lever, as is the carb heat and the primer. And uh, as I said, it's uh, pretty much as the aircraft was. Start, 
if we did want to start it. Uh, there's a flat battery on this at the moment, so uh, it will need starting for when I show you it flying shortly. So what we're going to do is go and have a look now at the mechanical workings of, uh, of the simulator. Uh, as I said, this is a very short video. Um, we're going to have a look at how the flying controls uh, are rigged, how the uh, instruments are rigged, and so we're going to have a look in the nose section of the aircraft. So we're going to move across there now. And in the, the nose, we've, uh, we've got a door that's constructed into the nose. And there you can have a, a general view of the, uh, the yoke control system. The chain there, left to right, links the yoke in terms of aileron, left and right. I'll show you that in a moment. Um, all done with potentiometers and uh, Arduino boards and a, um, a Leo Bodner board um, card you may have just seen on the left hand side. Up there, top right, which I'll highlight very shortly, is uh, one of the Arduino boards, the green box thing you see there. I'm blurring out the rest, but you should see the Arduino board, the green board. There are about three of them uh, in the nose bay, and they control all of the instrument servos. So if you look on the back of the instruments, you can see the little blue um, radio-controlled aircraft servos that are used uh, to drive the original instruments. Um, very, very easy system to use with Moby Flight, uh, and it's fully uh, compatible both now with uh, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and with uh, and with Prepare 3D. I've highlighted there the aileron control. You can see the there's a little lever that I'm zooming in on now, and it's moving a gear, okay. and the gear is basically just turning a little potentiometer. Um, we put a, little, a couple of bolts you may see in that uh, in that section to stop uh, over rotation of the yoke. Looking down now, this is the uh, elevator control, and again I'll highlight very shortly down at the bottom there you'll see there's a potentiometer linked to a gear system right in the front here and as the uh, yoke is fore and aft right now as we're turning it you'll see the potentiometer is moving slightly these are um, 100k potentiometers all the way around doesn't really matter what value you use but 10 to 100k is, is perfect um, yoke again uh, sorry the aileron again just showing you that moving and now let's have a quick look at the rudders so my colleagues in there pushing the rudders you can see I'm looking to the left hand side the thing I've focused on is a little potentiometer again and a gear system and then for the brakes themselves you'll see a potentiometer on each brake on either side only on the uh, P1 side the P2 pedals are linked but the brakes and there's no potentiometers on that side there's a Leo Bodner board I talked about so that controls basically all of the uh, potentiometers uh, and also the majority of the switches in the cockpit. Well, we've rushed through this, but uh, a quick short flight demo flown by my colleague Neil Johnson here. Um, it is filmed with a, uh, uh, an iPhone, so uh, I will put some better ones up later. But this will give you an idea of the aircraft flying. Uh, and I will stop talking. We're going to make an approach into uh, Royal Naval Air Station Yeovilton in Somerset in the UK. Um, very realistic, photorealistic scenery, satellite scenery for this one. But you'll see uh, Neil flying in uh, and going to do a nice landing, hopefully. So I'll keep quiet. You can get some audio from, from this short clip. So he's coming on to finals on uh, runway 09 at uh, Yeovilton. And he's going to attempt to land short. You will see the Pappies, the position approach path indicators all go red, which will all say he's too low. He is too low for the, uh, the ILS touchdown point, but he's going to try and land on the piano keys or close to them. There's a crosswind from the right, so you will see some drift as he lands.
and there you have it. So that was it. That's a very short introduction into our Cessna. By the way, if you look at worldwideweb.simshack.co.uk, that is under construction, and you'll see a Piper PA28. Um, I'm about to replace that with the Cessna, as it's the uh, the new edition, and we're not going ahead with the PA28. But if you have a look at that, uh, sh show you the build. Goodbye for now. Thank you.